Hi everyone, I'm Jack from Rack and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share a few thoughts on Permafrost by Ava Baltasar. This was Baltasar's debut novel, and it's a very, very strong debut. Uh, her background as a poet is evident. There is this startling imagery on so many of the pages. Uh, it is very physical imagery. It's very specific. It's very sensory. There's a tactile nature uh, to many of the passages in this book. Uh, but much of the book is an interior monologue uh, for, for a narrator who is in at least some sense autobiographical. And Baltasar uses this monologue to really explore uh, perception. How do others perceive the narrator? How does the narrator perceive herself? What are the aspects of her identity that, that are most salient in the way others interact with her and, and in the way she really reflects on her own life, her own desires? Uh, is it the fact that she studied art and specifically art history rather than fine arts and there's something about her that absolutely loves art and appreciates art and wishes she, she could be this artist uh, and of course Baltasar herself is an artist as a poet as a novelist um, is it that she's a lesbian is it that she's she's not married um, th those are aspects of, of her identity that, that are very clear to her um, and, and clear to her family to her sister and the way that her, she remembers the, the little ways in which her mother sort of uh, denigrates her, her own, the narrator's life in comparison to her sister. And so th those come through. But so much of this book is, is about how do we move forward in our lives as, as we start to recognize aspects of ourselves and, and recognize how those aspects are perhaps not appreciated by others, but or even that we are not appreciating those aspects of ourselves. So it's a really incredible book, but I did want to dive into just a couple of passages that, that explore what's going on. I'm home. Home is actually the guest room of my sister's rental apartment. The bedroom is small and plain, like a prison cell. There's a mattress on the floor, a plastic orange coat rack behind the door, and a wardrobe full of junk. I kill hours of insomnia rifling through the contents of the closet. Old clothes and white hotel towels, plus a couple of my sister's photo albums. It's weird to see her with her friends. I've never met. Sisters lead identical lives until one of them grows up. And then the other begins to do things in secret, above all, meeting new people to fill the hole her sister left. And she goes on to study these photos and think about, well, who, who are these people her sister knew? What, what did that mean? She thinks of times when she was a child uh, and she remembers different aspects of, of her childhood and a time where she goes with friends to a friend's house and uh, to after school and they're gonna do some, some work on their homework together and they're having snacks and they're eating the snacks that an 11 year old would be eating. And then one of the friends puts on a, a videotape that turns out to be an adult film. And she remembers her perception of this. Uh, she remembers different aspects of, of sort of realizing that she's dreaming about, about celebrities who are women or um, a teacher at school and, and all these different things that, that are awakening her this sense of what she desires. And the, the idea that, you know, children eat child snacks and uh, have child drinks and adults have uh, adult dinners. That, that their palates are developed for, and they have adult drinks that, that they're able to consume. And so perhaps there are aspects of, of romance that are for children and for adults, and she's trying to reconcile all that. But the imagery keeps coming back. I've just scrubbed the tub. Sitting in it was so gross, I had to scrape orange crab-shaped glue off the bottom, leaving behind marks edged in black mold that refused to come out. I look it up online and go to the supermarket for steel scouring pads and bleach. Scrub a dub dub. After 15 minutes, the mold has retreated but the crab silhouettes are still there, apparently burnt into the ceramic. It's odd, astonishing even, what the passage of time does to the adhesive properties of certain glues. Glue was probably more aggressive 20 years ago than it is today. Everything was more aggressive 20 years ago. There were even heavy metals in baby bottles. This must be why baby boomers are such a remarkable generation, drugged from the cradle. I fill the bathtub all the way with lukewarm warm water and immediately realize I've made a mistake. I should shower first. And she goes on to think about um, what would she want this tub to look like and feel like if she were to attempt to, to die by suicide in that moment. Because that is the consciousness that this monologue pushes at. Baltasar is, is very, as I said, raw, unflinching, transparent about feeling um, so disconnected from herself, from, from uh, any volition, uh, from her family, from friends, from, from the women she loves that she, she at times seriously is seriously contemplating uh, death and not necessarily being afraid of it, but, but thinking it through um, in terms of a very serious process. And so that, that is something to be aware of if you're, if you're uh, reading this book, um, but it's, it's not something that she's poking fun at or, um, or, or bragging about in any ways. It's a very real aspect of her identity. And, and 
Uh, the genesis of the novel was actually that she had been asked to write out certain ideas as a therapeutic exercise, and then she started inserting fictional components into it. In a later uh, experience, when her, ne uh, her niece is, has a uh, disease in her eyes and is in the hospital, and they, she has to receive eye drops every hour. And the narrator is sitting there and is like, okay, I, I will be responsible to take care of this. Even though she's been told she could not be you know, responsible for her niece uh, if something were to happen to her sister and her brother-in-law because she's not married, she's not part of a stable you know, family. Uh, she's the one who's going to be diligent and, and put those eye drops in every hour. And so as she's thinking about this, she, she looks at her, her niece as she's putting in eye drops and there's this medical treatments going on. Her eyes are now large mirrored wells that have started to spring leaks, drenching and neutralizing the hostile chemistry with subsoil efficiency. When I look at her, I see a lake lost in its own depth, a lake black and crystal clear. She learns from it and I unlearn from her. I draw away and pace up and down spiral staircases that fill me and try to communicate something to me. I've realized that I know myself by heart. I know myself to the point of recognizing people who don't exist and yet compliment me. I know myself like a path that leads home, like a doorless corridor, like endless guardrails. I know myself like a decades long involuntary commitment to end and be done with it. I sense a change in my body. It is unsexed, majestic, and magnificently afflicted, like a tower riddled with sorrow. And I can feel the whole crush of humanity inside me, concentrated in a place that is absolutely personal. Um, and this is such a personal novel that at the same time, because of the depth of the monologue, because there is no mask or facade that is put up, truly draws the reader and draws the reader deep into this consciousness to have this, this communion and this, this conversation. And it is a very powerful book. I'm, I'm very excited to read um, Boulder, which is being nominated for prizes this year and, and, and has been uh, newly translated. Uh, but Permafrost is an excellent place to start with, uh, with Balthasar. So let me know if you've read this. Um, of course, there are works that come to mind. I think I thought specifically of the works of Ariana Harwitz, whether it's Die My Love or Feeble Minded. Again, there's a very raw power and emotion to the, these books uh, and a, a very specific um, intellect that this consciousness, a voice that we're being drawn into um, in both of these novels from Harwitz. The epigraph comes from uh, Thomas Bernhard's The Loser, and there are several aspects around almost like existentialist philosophy, the definition of life and, and when is a life a success or a failure is very evident. The deep sense of monologue, certainly no longer human by Osamu Tozai feels very close. Uh, and and not, not just from the, the focus of um, narrators who, who are seriously considering suicide, but from, from the idea of characters who feel that they are, are so cut off from those around them. And, and what that type of isolation and the, the and isolation from others, but almost this sense of in exploring oneself, there are ways in which uh, an, an individual can become dissociated even from his or her own identity. Certainly, um, last words from Mon Mart by Chiu uh, Miao Jin um, takes that to an, uh, in a different direction and in a, a deeper and more final direction, but this is a very powerful book to read if you never have. One of the ways that the narrator thinks of herself is through um, wanting to be uh, Valmont from Dangerous Liaisons, the film, but the book by uh, Schroederlos de Laclos comes to mind as well, and, and be the one who's trying to seduce women um, the way that Valmont did. As a poet, I was thinking, of course, of Elizabeth Bishop, one of my all-time favorite poets. And there are aspects of the, the autobiographical nature and the, the queer identity that, that is certainly very um, transparent that remind me of James Baldwin's novels, whether it's Giovanni's Room or even Gotel on the Mountain. The sensory language that's so evident uh, reminds me of Toni Morrison, probably The Bluest Eye being the closest work. And then works like Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata, the, the, the very beautiful poetic um, prose, or the real, menacing danger of steps in Jerzy Kaczynski that, that's so focused and, and just drills forward and, and slashes out. Uh, the, these are two other works that came to mind. So let me know if you've read Permafrost. Let me know if you've read Boulder. I'm going to be looking to get a, my hands on a copy because I'm very interested in reading more from Baltasar. And let me know if you've read any of her poetry. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you.